Once upon a time, there was an actor who looked indistinguishable from Alexander Siddig, so they did the only logical thing they could do and cast him in Star Trek 2. That won't confuse anyone, surely. I'm Gay Fesh, and today we'll be discussing Star Trek Picard Season 2 Episode 7, Monsters. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. As always, spoilers, but to be honest, I'm not sure how much there is to spoil here. This episode seems to be taking a detour away from doing the plot in order to get things in position for the finale. I was actually expecting the episode to take place fully inside Picard's head, but that story actually ends about halfway through, unresolved other than Picard wakes up. Talon doesn't even appear to do anything in there other than observe Picard deal with some unresolved mommy-daddy issues. We also find out that Talon is secretly a Romulan and thus likely an ancestor of Laris, which is probably the most disappointing and meaningless way to explain why they look the same. I do find it interesting that in the framing of his mind, he is telling a fairy tale in which he describes his mother as a queen. Considering the Borg Queen echoed her words in episode one, that can't be a coincidence. And casting James Callis as his father is an interesting choice and seems about inevitable that they'd cast him in Trek eventually. The real trick is for season three to have Bashir go into Picard's mind and meet his dad too. Seven and Raffi discover that Agnes has been infected by the Queen, but this is barely given any time in the episode as they are only starting to track her down. And Rios picks up the idiot ball hard on this one as he beams the clinic doctor lady and her son to La Serena. Why, dude? I get she was asking questions about the whole mind probe thing Talon was doing, but seriously? Screw the temporal prime directive, I guess. We do get a fun Star Trek IV callback where Rio says, I'm from Chile, I just work in outer space. The only way this will be justified is if he uses the bio bed to wipe their memories like they did for the cop a few episodes ago. What I am excited for here is that Picard and Talon reason this whole scenario, including Picard having nightmares about his distant father and mentally ill mother, must be part of Q's machinations to teach Picard something about himself. Picard decides that he's tired of playing defense and wants to take the fight to Q, so he seeks out the assistance of Guinan. She explains that her species in the Q continuum made a truce a long time ago, and she has a way that's guaranteed to summon him, except it doesn't work, probably because Q's without powers right now. Who does show up at the bar, however, is a ton of federal agents who got video footage of Picard using the transporter. Uh-oh. So what did you think? Did Q send the feds, or is that just an unrelated snag in the ordeal? Leave a comment down below. I'm still holding out hope we get a direct confrontation between Guided and Q. I want to know what that hand gesture of hers does. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share the video with your friends. Subscribe to my Patreon to get shouted out in future videos. Check out my Bandcamp for banging tunes, including all the tracks you heard in this video. Follow me on Twitter at GayestFesh, and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Rest of Both Worlds, where I go through Star Trek The Next Generation with a friend who's never seen it. Thanks to my patrons Piftelcakes and Renee Vorbeck. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you all in the next video.